Hey, beloved ones, this will be added to my Twisted Verses uh, playlist, but it's an answer to a viewer. Uh, it's in 1 Peter. It says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? So, again, we're going to look at context here. We know that there's none righteous, no, not one. So if someone's called righteous, it's because they have God's imputed righteousness on them. Uh, our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So if you're called righteous, it's because God has imputed his righteousness on you because you've trusted in the finished work of Christ. So when Peter says that, we have to look at what we're being saved from. Now, whenever it says saved or salvation, it's not always talking about eternal damnation. Uh, I have a bunch of videos I'm going to do this week. Um, sanctification uh, versus salvation and so forth. Some really good ideas uh, and some requests. But I want to answer this. I did it a long time ago, but I'm going to explain it short and sweet and show you in the context of what Peter is speaking about. So when he says, uh, when the righteous scarcely be saved, is he talking about uh, from hell? No. What is he talking about? You can be saved from chastisement, from early death, from the consequences of sin, from man's judgment, from looking a certain way, uh, or from hell. So these people are righteous, are already in right standing with God, which is what that means. Then they're already saved. So what is he talking about being saved from? Let's look at the context here. It, now, at first he's talking about the suffering that the Christians are going through. Remember, you have to read in context of what's going on back then. Uh, in his second letter, he's talking about he's getting ready to be put to death, and this body is going to be gone. He talks about shedding this tabernacle or something. So this is in reference to the persecutions and the suffering they would go through as a Christian. So he said, if you be reproached for the name of Christ... Happy are ye. He's saying, you know, don't get down that people are hating you and persecuting you. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. He's saying, be happy in the sufferings. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busy busybody in other men's matters. So what is he saying here? If you're going to suffer, suffer for the Lord because there's glory in that. Don't suffer for the consequences of being a sinner. You're saved. You belong to God. So if you're going to suffer, do it for his sake. Okay? So, yes, saved people are capable of this. This flesh is not perfected. That's why we're told to reckon it dead, that it was crucified with Christ so that we can put on the new man and walk in newness of life. Again, sanctification versus salvation. Eternal life really is a free gift. There's nothing here that's going to contradict that. And if it appears to, you need to check the context, okay? All right. But let, let, none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, he's talking to Christians, I'm talking to Christians here. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf, okay? So whatever suffering you're enduring, do it for his name's sake. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. This is talk, judgment, what, if it's the house of God, is the judgment unto eternal death? No. The house of God means that you've been born into his family. The house of God is already saved. All right? Or he wouldn't call you part of the house of God. All right? So judgment must, what kind of judgment? Earthly, temporal judgment. Sin has consequences. Okay? He wants to keep you in his will. We're not saved, just another video I'm going to do. We're not saved just to get out of hell. We're saved to serve the Lord. And when you're not doing that, you're not in his will, and, it, and he wants more for you than that. Okay? So we're saved unto good works. We're saved to walk in newness of life. We're saved to glorify God. Otherwise, he'd just take us home right after we're saved. Okay? So, the time has come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? See? 
Judgment's going to come on the believers first. We're supposed to be the example. What about those that don't believe? Obey the gospel means to be steadfast in that Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And through that, your sins have been purged. That he paid for all your sins and you're in right standing with God. You've been justified, declared righteous in right standing with God because of what Christ did. So again, if it first began at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? He's talking about the unsaved here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So this judgment coming on the house of God is not eternal judgment. We've been saved. This is temporal judgment, okay? So if the righteous, which are people that are in Christ, scarcely be saved from this judgment, earthly judgment, how much worse is it going to be for the unsaved? Okay, that's all it's saying. Wherefore, them, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay, he's encouraging them to remain steadfast in the truth and just deal with this suffering because it glorifies God. But keep doing the good works. Keep living for God. He's not forsaken you. We know you're suffering persecution. But if you're going to suffer, don't suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer. Suffer for Christ's sake. Do you see it now? Okay, so these aren't. this is not about being saved from hell, all right, by your good works. It's about being saved from the consequences of, of this. It's about being saved from, it tells you right there, the judgment that must begin on the house of God. Okay? So hopefully it makes it clear to you. Not every saved or salvation is referring to eternal salvation. I hope I answered it for you guys. God bless.